I'm going to start off by requesting that you travel back in time with me a number of years. Because what I'd like to do is start at an ending. A number of years ago, I was standing at home by myself, feeling a little overwhelmed, a little bit stunned. I had some papers in my hand. These were my divorce papers. And at that moment in time, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that my marriage was over and my divorce was complete. Now, from start to end, from separation to divorce, it was a three-year process. Three years where I asked myself a lot of questions. A lot of questions. But the most important question was, would I be able to love again? Now, you might be thinking, love somebody else, but actually what I'm really talking about is, would I be able to love myself again? Would I be able to love my life again? So, now for the beginning of this story. I'm going to ask you to travel back in time with me once again. To the year 1994, when, if you look at me now, I was somewhat similar to back then, maybe a little thinner back then, a little more hair back then. I was about 25, several years out of college, and <coughs> I felt so young. Actually, I felt like I knew the whole world. I knew everything, but I felt so young. Anyway, I worked for a stock brokerage firm. I wore blue pinstripe suit, red power tie. And at that time, I was single. And I'd asked, I'd been asked by a friend of mine at the brokerage firm if he, if it would be okay if he set me up with a friend of his girlfriend's. I said, sure, no problem. So that Saturday, I went to this house, and I met this woman. We all had dinner and food. And, you know, we hit it off enough that we went out on a date. You know what? She was interested. She was excited. She had traveled all over the world. She had recently moved back after living abroad for a number of years. But you know what the number one characteristic was that I loved about her? It was amazing. It was a tremendous. She liked me. <laughs> she liked me. Because you know what? At that time, I didn't feel like I had any of those. I didn't feel like I was interesting. I didn't feel like I was exciting. And secretly, I was hoping that by just being <coughs> next to her, some of that would kind of seep in. You know, I didn't want to work for that. So that was the beginning. Four dates turned into four weeks, turned into four months, and then four years. Four years. During that time, we had merged our lives. We had gone on adventures. We had gone and had fun, road trips, everything else. And there were great times, and there were also really unpleasant times. But you know what? Hey, I was four years in. And four years, you're probably thinking that decision had to be made. Yeah. Whether or not to get married. And every time I asked myself that question, there was this little, uh, and I'm exaggerating, obviously, but it was there. And you know, my brain started thinking, ah, you know, it's just nerves. Hey, it's a big decision, right? Of course. So my brain kind of took over. And basically my brain was saying, hey Dave, you're four years in. You've merged lives. Things are going okay. They're going okay. And my body's going. But hey, just nervous. So I got married. I got married. From start to end, from first date to end, it was 14 years. Long time. And during that year, during that time, we had challenges. And every marriage is going to have challenges. But the biggest challenge for me is that I abandoned myself. I lost myself. Didn't stand up for myself. 
I didn't ask for what I needed, ask for what I wanted. Hell, I didn't even know what I needed or wanted. I lost myself. During that time, we hurt each other. She hurt me, I hurt her. But most importantly, at least for me, I hurt myself. There were red flags during this time, many throughout the years, but the two I'm going to share with you happened toward the end. We were at a dinner with a bunch of friends, actually having a good time. We were talking about a recent trip that we'd done. And during that time, we enjoyed some food. But later in the conversation, she actually started speaking poorly about me. She was dissing me, basically. And I was sitting there in that seat with a big old grin on my face, but kind of dying inside, kind of shuddering. Did I stand up for myself? Mm, no, I didn't, unfortunately. It took a friend to actually stand up for me and say, hey, that's not, that's not being kind. And inside, because I was so used to being the nice guy, used to not making waves, used to thinking that in order for a marriage to work, that I had to accommodate. Anyway. The next red flag was timing. She moved out. <laughs> she moved out, and even though she was in a different state, she said, oh, technically we're not separated. But inside, I'm like anxious. I'm like, oh my gosh, there is so much going on here. I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose my family. And I'm going to be alone. I'm going to be alone. My life was crumbling around me. Tremendous fear. But you know, the wonderful thing about this was that it was a wake-up call. Tremendous pain during this time period. Pain that was turned into motivation. And for the first time in my life, I decided to look at myself and see how was I approaching life unskillfully. So I became tremendously motivated. I read voraciously. I joined a men's group, got some support. But the single most important thing that happened during that time period was that I grew completely wholehearted about my approach to mindfulness practice. Now, I dabbled in it for years, but now I really try to integrate it into my life. Now, you might be asking what mindfulness practice is. Dan Siegel, MD, who's done a tremendous amount of research on mindfulness practice, says it's an intentional, non judgmental awareness of moment to moment experience. It's quite a mouthful, but in essence, it is paying attention to the present moment with acceptance. Very simple, so beautifully simple. And one of the things I really enjoyed about this practice is that there is a tremendous amount of research that is devoted to learning about it and actually pointing to the effectiveness, the effectiveness of it for depression, anxiety, relationships, all kinds of things. If you're interested, go to PubMed.gov. It's a research repository. You can just type in mindfulness and find out for yourself. You can also go to the American Psychological Association and do the same thing. So during that time, I practiced, I integrated the practice, and I learned a lot. I learned about the importance of listening deeply, listening to myself, but also listening to others. The importance of kindness, not just kindness to other people, but also kindness to myself. Gentleness, openness, relaxation. For decades, I had gone through life kind of like this. My window of tolerance for emotions was kind of like this. I didn't feel a lot of happiness. I didn't feel a lot of sadness. I was just kind of numb right there in the middle. You can't experience the world if you're tight. Most of all, the most important thing I learned was to welcome life. To welcome everything. To welcome sadness, grief, happiness, joy, frustration, challenges, everything. Try to learn to welcome it. Back to our story. So once again, a decision had to be made, but this time, instead of getting married, it was about divorce. And I kept on asking myself that question, would I be able to love again? I still had the same fears from that first decision. Fear of being alone, 
fear of losing everything. But this time I took a different approach. I tried to integrate that mindfulness practice and welcome the uncertainty, welcome the stress, welcome the anxiety. It doesn't make it any less painful, but at least I'm not adding additional suffering on top of that pain. During that time, I was sitting at home contemplating the chaos that my life was at that moment, and I had a flash of insight. I knew, without a doubt, with 100% certainty, that the most healthy decision was to get divorced. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And then several days later, I changed my mind. <laughs> oh my gosh! I can't believe it. I'm flip-flopping. I'm creating so much additional anxiety for myself, it's crazy. It took a friend of mine to remind me that, Dave, this is part of the process. You'll know when you know. <clears throat> Welcome to the process. And eventually, I became certain about my decision. From start to end, three years, I learned a tremendous amount during that time period. And I began to open life. I began to look and see what I was truly passionate about, what I enjoyed, what I wanted. And there were also challenges. But I discovered with all the practice that I'd done, I was able to meet those challenges so much more effectively. I went to nursing school, an accelerated program where I had to learn a tremendous amount of material in a very short period of time. Deadlines, stress, lots of papers, I hadn't been in the academic setting for 20 some odd years. But you know what? I had discovered that I had found this general discipline that I had never had before. And I graduated with a 4.0, completely opposite to what my first academic experience was. I welcomed the stress, and I practiced and practiced for years. And I opened, and I got to the point where I accepted myself. And I could even say that I loved myself and I loved my life. So I created this foundation where it was time to share my life. I dated a few times, you know, the anxiety that goes along with that, just welcoming that. And I was so tremendously fortunate because I discovered this beautiful woman. Beautiful woman. She was amazing but there was that awkwardness at the beginning. We couldn't quite connect. And then I held her hand, and I felt my entire body relax. Basically, I sighed with relief. And that was the gateway, that was the opening. And we connected deeply. And we learned to accept each other for who we were. We fell deeply in love. I never experienced anything like this in my life. And we committed. Not, I'm not talking about just exclusivity, although that was part of it. We committed to each other, to each other's self-development, to each other's self-growth. And then we learned, or started to learn, how to disagree skillfully. Because even in the most intimate and loving of relationships, you still disagree. Because we all have childhood wounds. And we both tried to apply mindfulness to allowing that to happen as it naturally did. We dropped into fight or flight oftentimes, where your mind actually goes offline and you can't make decisions really well. So one encouragement is never make a decision while you're stressed out in disagreement. We learned the power of pausing and repair, repairing after these disagreements so that we can actually come out feeling like we trusted each other more and fell more deeply in love. We experimented with different ways of disagreeing and we treated each other with gentleness and ourselves with gentleness. I feel tremendous gratitude for that first marriage. Tremendous gratitude because I learned so much and I would not be here today if it weren't for that experience. And to conclude, I would really love to encourage you to welcome your humanity, welcome your sadness, your grief, your joy, your happiness, everything, all the challenges with mindfulness. Thank you.